Hi, I'm Mitra Sorrells in the Focus Wire studio at Focus Right Europe, and I am joined by Kirsten Raymond. She is CEO of Han Air. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mitra. Great to talk to you. So, you know, I'm really curious to dive into a bit about Han Air because, you know, it's maybe not one that people um, are necessarily familiar with outside of the airline industry per se. So it, you've been around since 1999. It is an airline, but then the bulk of your business is your indirect distribution services to other airlines. So give us a sense of that scope. Yes, absolutely. So Han Air has been a champion in airline distribution for over 20 years now. So what we do is uh, we basically help support and assist airlines um, to master indirect distribution. That's what we are doing. So um, we do with one connection, they can hook on to our solutions and then they get global access to 190 markets and 100,000 travel agencies so they can make more revenue. They open up new markets and uh, well get access to the, to the major global distribution systems. Yeah, that's really fascinating. It sounds like a much more efficient way for them to operate, certainly. Can you give us a sense about how many airlines are you working with right now? Yes, so we're working with over uh, 350 airline partners. So it's really global, even though we are uh, a small mid-sized company, I would say with around uh, 250 employees. So uh, mm. we're covering the whole world, very diverse uh, company, um, yeah, taking care of the diverse needs of our, of our airline partners on the one hand side. On the other hand, um, we work with 100,000 uh, 100, travel agencies. Right. So basically, it's, a, it's good for everyone. It's a win-win situation. So airlines, they can open up more markets, make more revenue. And travel agents on the other side, they can get access to, to content to airline they wouldn't otherwise have. So, and of course for the passenger, it's also good. So you can say it's a win-win-win situation that we can offer um, to the industry. Yeah, that's really interesting. So you certainly have a lot of visibility then into really what's happening around the globe with the airline industry. What would you, what comes to mind as far as some of the key challenges facing the industry today? Key challenges is of course, costs like bringing back now the business after this um, pandemic right. looking into the cost and uh, finding efficient and good ways to, um, to to get the extra that is out there um, without having to do it themselves so basically outsourcing their secondary tertiary markets to someone that is really an expert in that and that uh, really helps um, in in that case so really like filling niche with with partners so finding good partners that can help bring up the business i think that's very important what about you know one of the things we often hear in tandem with any discussion about the airline mm -hmm. industry is the legacy technology mm -hmm and how that may be holding back some innovation. What, what is your take on that? Yes, so um, you're right. So indirect distribution, travel agents, it's based on legacy technology. Yeah. And uh, only the last couple of years, we can see there is really a, a move to uh, direct connect and um, yeah, getting closer to, um, well, the, the customer. Right. Uh, so doing direct uh, sales, but also direct connections to, to the travel agents. So this is moving forward at a slow pace. However, yeah. it's accelerating, picking up. And this is why we also, of course, are looking into these new trend, new technologies that will help to, um, yeah, to, to, to bring a good um, experience, a customer experience uh, also to the airline world um, as we are used to in, in the retailing space in general. Yeah, that's certainly you know been a hot topic, I think, for a couple mm. of years that consumers have gotten used to a certain level of service and a certain level of, uh, access and that it needs to now come to the travel industry as well. So what is your take on what's happening with NDC? You know, that's been a very hot topic, um, really kind of picked up in the last few months with what's happened with American. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, so we really see this accelerating and um, so more and more carriers, more and more agencies uh, becoming ready for NEC or direct distribution in general, yeah. I would say. So this is really speeding up. And uh, we are exploring this to then find solutions to the like the small and mid-sized um, airlines as well. Um, we or our priority is to um, yeah, to find good solutions for them as well um, to make sure that they are present in the relevant distribution 
um, channels that they need. So this is also one of our areas we're looking at. Yeah, and is that the, the bulk of your airline partner customers then would be what you would categorize as like the small to mid-size? Yes, we do have all of them. So uh, carriers of any size can work with that and, and benefit from our solutions. Um, there is many mid-sized and smaller carriers as well that are either not in the GDS that we can bring to the GDSs. Um, so catering to their needs, listening to, to what they need um, in terms of distribution and then coming up with solutions that can help and support them in their distribution needs. I'm curious your take on the topic of loyalty mm -hmm. for the airline industry and maybe for some of your partners. Any thoughts on what more can be done to kind of create some loyalty? Yes, what is important to us, we do not work with the uh, end consumer, with right. the passengers. However, partnerships are very important and we hear this a lot at this conference, partnering up, working as an industry, as an ecosystem to come up with good solutions for the customer at the end. Uh, this is needed then um, to, to really build up the loyalty and, and to, to build the trust in, in the brand. So um, partnering with, um, w with the ecosystem, this is, is really key, I believe, uh, to, 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 to get yeah. loyalty by the customer. That's what we need at the end of the day. Because I suppose if you think about it, you know, those types of partnerships and things can then create it comes down to the customer experience is what then mm -hmm. drives that loyalty, mm -hmm. I guess, mm -hmm. um, improving that customer experience. So I'm curious to talk to you about, we just learned that Han Air has created an innovation node. Um, tell us a little bit more about that. You're inviting startups and industry players to pitch their ideas, build a proof of concept, and maybe work with you on some innovation projects. Mm -hmm. what, what's happening in there for mm -hmm. you? Yeah, that's right. So actually that's something we've uh, announced only recently last yeah. week. So starting innovation at Hania, as we call it. So um, we're bringing our knowledge to the table and inviting startups or industry players to work with us on proof of concepts, on, on ideas that they bring and um, really looking into new solutions that can then be for the benefit of the, of the travel industry or then um, also be used to, um, yeah, to, to get new solutions out there um, for the benefit of, of the customers and, and for the airlines. Yeah, and I saw in the announcement that came in to me, it mentioned specifically potentially some work around blockchain, around NFTs. I mean, what's your take? Mm -hmm. Both of those topics get a lot of debate. Mm -hmm. You know, is it hype? Is there real value? What, mm -hmm. what would you say? Mm -hmm. So what we do in terms of blockchain is we're partnering with Chain for Travel. So yes. we're um, acting there as a, as a node validator on the blockchain. Um, with really the, the goal to find out what is the benefit, what is the value that is behind all of that, to develop that and then, um, yeah, this is basically the goal and to, to then come up with, with new solutions that can potentially then um, be, ba be of benefit for, um, for, for any partner in the, in the, in the travel ecosystem. And you've also mentioned, mentioned NFTs. Yeah. So um, there we are working with TravelX yeah. Um, on a, we are doing a proof of concept to really also find out here what is the advantage for both for the airlines and for, um, for, for the travel agents. How can it be used as a, as a distribution model? So this is the goal of our um, innovation initiative. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what develops out of that. You mm -hmm. know, that those are certainly topics that we're covering very closely. I, I also have to ask you, of course, about chat GPT, generative AI. Do you mm -hmm. see potential applications of that type of technology? Yes, for sure. There is a big potential, and uh, this seems to be the buzzword of this conference, really, yeah. <laughs> um, generative uh, um, uh, chat GPT. So in terms of uh, customer service, yeah. that will be very important, very helpful. So it's still a very manual, a human, um, yeah, or, or work intensive um, area. Customer supports are really here to um, work on all the, 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 the simpler things that um, can be answered easily. So um, yeah. that will be, or that will have a big potential and for sure we're exploring um, here as well what we can do in terms of uh, efficiency. Yeah, I'd imagine you may see some startups coming forward through that innovation node with some interesting creative ideas related to large language models and generative AI. So and we are really inviting them to, to come on to us and then let's work together and, uh, and find uh, new use cases. That's what we need for all the uh, 
uh, above all the new technologies out there, yeah. finding the right use cases where we can uh, really make use of it. Wonderful. All right. Well, Kirsten Raymond from Hanair, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Mitra. All right. Bye-bye.